Okay, guys. Uh, so, um, I've separated my highlights from my lights. That was step one. Step two, I found my light breaks, adjusted the edge of them. The next step is to go back to the lights and start getting separations between our light and halftone. So let's start doing that. Um, you can see that when your brush is really good, you can basically stick with the same one all the way through. Uh, this brush has a really fine point on it. It holds a lot of wash. I can do very fine detail work. With cheaper brushes, you might have to work a little bit smaller. Um, but, really it's a question of skill as opposed to the materials you can, you're can you using. Uh, you can use really cheap brushes and get really excellent effects. Okay, so now let's start working to separate our lights from our halftones. So where are we seeing halftones? Well, uh, we have a little halftone separating the pecs. So here I have to work pretty quickly once again. Uh, we've got fuzzy edges everywhere. Here and here. Uh, we have a little halftone just above the collarbone here. Let's do that. Uh, where else are we seeing halftones? We're seeing a little halftone here separating the inside of the shin and the calf. We have a little halftone underneath the kneecap here. By the way, if you put down a value and you realize, oh my god, it's too dark, you can always make an adjustment with your paper towel. So if I go in and, oh my god, Right, your paper towel will lighten the value. It won't get rid of it immediately, completely, but it'll definitely lighten it. And you can use the brush for that purpose as well. Um, okay, so let's go in and put in some half tones. We have a half tone here underneath the cheekbone. I went too dark here. Let's lift it up a little bit, or I can use a paper towel to lift. Let's adjust it a little bit. We have a half tone on the nose. We have a half tone right here. So again, half tones are created when the form is at 90 degrees to the light direction. So anywhere you have a plane that's turned the same direction, it's going to have essentially the same value. Um, sometimes thinking through the forms, thinking about where that 90 degrees actually is, will help you. Going back to the theme of really understanding what you're drawing in order to draw it correctly. Some these striations in the deltoid, the rotation here, 90 degrees. Okay. Put in your half tones. Uh, why is it important to jump back and forth between shadows and lights so you can compare the shadows against the lights and be more accurate with value? Value is very relative. I don't know what one value is until I can compare it to the next value. So once I've got half tones, now I can go back in the shadows and start getting distinctions in core shadow and our reflected light. So uh, this is a tricky operation. We need to Go in with a darker value here, like this. And then, as we're working, we need to adjust the edge on both sides. A little bit of water here, a little bit of water here. Pay attention to the fact that core shadows have different thicknesses. They have different intensities to them, so sometimes they go really dark and really sharp. Sometimes they go light and diffused. Look for the core shadow. Don't lose your soft edges, that's important. But essentially, everywhere you see a body shadow, there necessarily has to be a core. Otherwise, the forms don't turn. Keep checking your values against the edge of your paper. Uh, there's some places where instead of reflected light here, the form goes a little bit darker along the edge. You can do that too. So 
but we've got this kind of dark silhouetted edge on this side. shadows. All I'm doing right now is looking for the shape of my core shadows. You do one task at a time, you do that task more effectively. You try to do a bunch of different things all at once, you fail. Too much to juggle. Now, because you're working with a material that's more or less not correctable, this might at the beginning feel like a stressful experience. Oh my god, I can't make changes. Everybody, don't think the drawing fails just because there's mistakes in it. Right? Uh, quite often, mistakes actually make the drawing better. I don't know if that makes sense. A mistake that is corrected will make the drawing better. Right? Uh, you'll often see this in old master drawings where they don't bother erasing, they don't bother making a correction, but they just go right over the drawing and make some kind of correction doesn't make the drawing worse. So unless you're doing illustration, some kind of commission piece where the piece has to be absolutely perfect, absolutely don't stress. Look, you're going to screw up. There are going to be mistakes. Sometimes that gives the drawing a certain energy, a certain quality. It's better than perfection. All right, so here we have a slightly darker edge. So if you guys remember the properties of cast shadows, cast shadows are darker at the point of origin. They get lighter as they move away. That's something that we can start putting in and adjusting at this stage. Um, be careful not to make your cast shadows the same value all the way through. Some of the images on the new Masters Academy make it look that way. So for instance, here in the photograph, the cast shadow looks very, very dark, almost cut out. Don't make it the same value all the way through. So I notice if I look carefully, a little bit darker here. And also there is a dark edge over here. By the way, I have these values pre-mixed, uh, but also mix them together, make adjustments to them in the large reservoir of your palette. Right? So you can see how I'm getting much more specific about the value now. Start putting details in the shadows. Going darker in places. Okay, so I'm going to refine this drawing a little bit more and then we'll talk about some additional last steps. Okay, I worked a little more on this to put in the core shadows. Um, We've got our half tones. The drawing is close to completion. Uh, but before we finish it, the next thing I need to do is erase my pencil. You'll find quite often that things that look complete, once you erase the pencil, aren't quite as complete as you thought. So now that I can see that the drawing is actually pretty far from finished, now I'm going to start going in and replacing the lines that I took out with my eraser. So uh, get out your thin brush, or in my case I'm going to stick more or less with the same brush here, and start putting in those sharp little details that are now missing. Right, so the separation between the calf here. And look, are all those lines sharp? Well, maybe on one side, yes, on the other side, it starts going a little bit softer. Right, so this is the very last layer, the detailed stuff. Right, uh, the fact that the edge here goes a little bit darker, like that. 
Um, so while you guys weren't watching, I managed to put in a few little details in the facial features. Uh, they got a little bit lost when I erased the pencil. Now I can put them back in. So the details in the ears. This would be a good time to do it. I'm always as much as possible, particularly when you're doing a technique like this that isn't quite correctable, I'm trying to be as systematic as I can. And, uh, working big to small and really leaving these little details for the end of the drawing. Okay, so hopefully we're getting our clarity back. dark value here. It's going really dark. Start going towards your full range of contrast. Uh, this would be a good time to put in here. It's a risky operation, obviously. Probably, usually with hair, uh, the transition from the skin tone of the hair isn't quite so abrupt. So I'll run my wet brush along the edge just so the transition isn't really sharp and that the hair looks like a wig. Eyebrows. Uh, by the way, don't forget to put in the cast shadow underneath his body. Always, always, always plant your figure on the ground. And, uh, that's a really important aspect. So the cast shadow here. Draw it in. Okay, there's some values here that I forgot about. And make sure the cast shadow also always has some kind of value transition. So darker at the point of origin, darker at the point of origin, and then lighter as it moves away. Okay, so I'm going to refine this a little bit, uh, and then I'll take another photo, and then we'll be done with this demo.